Welcome, my name is Tim. And in this video, I'm going to guide you through the proper procedure for diagnosing a faulty high pressure cutout or HPCO on the residential air conditioner. Now, this is the high pressure cutout right here with the two yellow wires going to it. And it's placed in the discharge line of the compressor. And what it does is it senses pressure within the high side and will open its contacts if the pressure becomes excessive. And this would usually be due to an inoperative condenser fan motor, a dirty condenser coil potentially, non-condensables in the system, as well as a system overcharge. Now to begin with, to diagnose this problem, we need to go to the thermostat and ensure that it's calling for cooling. So once at the thermostat, click the selector switch to the cool position. This will also turn down the temperature setting of the thermostat below the room temperature. Don't forget to refer to the procedure guide after each step here at the top. So once we click OK, our next step is to take an inventory of which electrical loads are operational. The indoor fan is running here as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows. So we're going to click yes there. Now I've removed the cover from the outdoor unit, but we can see that our outdoor fan is not in fact operating, so we're going to click no. Now as for our compressor, you may be able to hear whether it's running or not, but it's always a good idea to use the clamp on ammeter to verify if the compressor's on or off, or in fact, if it's possibly cycling on and off. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the jaws of the clamp on ammeter, and we're gonna place them at this orange hotspot, which is the common wire to the compressor. And as evidenced by the display on the meter, we've got zero amps. It doesn't appear to be cycling. If it was cycling, we would see a value, and then it would drop to zero, and we would see the value again, and then it would drop to zero, and it would repeat this process. But in fact, the compressor is not running at all. So we're going to click zero amps on the procedure guide. Now our next step is to verify if 24 volts is being received at the contactor coil. Now when the contactor coil energizes, it's going to pull in the two sets of contacts and apply power, 240 volts in this case, to both the compressor motor and the condenser fan motor. So we're going to begin by dropping the leads at each of the orange hotspots at the contactor coil connections. And when we do this, we can see that we have zero volts. So our contactor coil is not receiving power. Now, if you're not clear on this, let's take a look at the indoor unit wiring diagram. And if you look here, you can see the placement of our meter leads at the contactor coil connection. And we're verifying that there's no voltage being received here. What this means is that we either have an open high pressure cutout, an open low pressure cutout, or possibly a faulty thermostat. Now we know the transformer is good because our indoor fan relay energized with 24 volts. Uh, we previously verified the indoor blower motors running. So again, we've narrowed it down to these, these three components right here, the two pressure switches as well as the thermostat. Our next step is to check the thermostat. So what we can do here after measuring voltage at the contactor and verifying we don't have anything there, our next step is to leave one of the leads right on the blue connection here on the contactor and move the black lead to this wire nut connection. And this is the low voltage connection from the thermostat to the outdoor unit's low voltage circuit. And we have 24 volts here. And this verifies that in fact the thermostat is closed and it's sending 24 volts to the outdoor unit. Again, if you want to look at the wiring diagram briefly, we can see that our black lead is placed here and we have 24 volts coming out of the thermostat in this case. So we're going to click 24 volts or yes on the procedure guide. And now we've got it narrowed down to the two pressure switches. Now I've already removed the outdoor cover, so I'm going to click OK here. And our next step is to check power coming out of the low pressure cutout, which is placed right here. Now the low pressure and high pressure cutout are both in series to this contactor coil, so either one of these could be at fault. We are leaving our blue lead on the contactor and we're going to place the red lead at the connection leaving the low pressure cutout. And when we do this we have 24 volts. Again, let's go back to the diagram for just a second. We click on the diagram, we can see the placement of our leads and again, we verified that we have power coming out of the low pressure cutout. So that's good. Now we're down to the high pressure cutout. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to simply move that lead to the wire coming out of the high pressure cutout. Now, if you need to, um, you know, you can zoom in. It's you know, A lot of times you're going to want to do that so you can get a better view of the components. Or you can click this little teleport icon up here at the top. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Um, 
and I'm going to place that lead right here at the wire nut connection coming out of the high pressure cutout. And when we did that, we've got zero volts. Now we had power at this wire nut going into the high pressure cutout, but we don't have power going out. This verifies that the high pressure cutout is in fact open. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide. We don't measure 24 volts, we measured zero. Now what this means is that more than likely you have some condition in the system, a mechanical condition, that caused the high pressure cutout to open its contacts. Again, to repeat these, it could be a dirty condenser, which you can you know, very easily visually inspect. It could be that we have non-condensables in the system. Perhaps the installer didn't properly evacuate and dehydrate the system prior to charging it. It's also possible we have a refrigerant overcharge or it's possible that the condenser fan motor is not running, but we already know that that's happened. The condenser fan motor's on. We verified that previously. So we're gonna click no on the procedure guide, and our next step is to check the actual pressures. Now we're gonna start by placing the red hose of the gauge manifold on the high pressure liquid line connection right here at this glowing orange hotspot, and we're gonna place the low pressure hose on the low pressure connection at the suction line here. And when we do this, we can see that we have 295 PSIG on the high side of the system. Now listen, this high pressure cutout on an R410A air conditioning system will typically open its contacts at about 550 to 600 PSI. Well, we only have 295 PSIG here, so those contacts should be closed. Uh, this indicates that we have a faulty high pressure cutout, which is fairly rare. Again, it's usually opening due to a mechanical condition, but in this case, we do in fact have a faulty high pressure cutout. So our procedure guide asks us, you know, is the high side above the cutout set in a 550? Well, no, it's not. It's 295 PSIG. At this point, we need to replace the high pressure cutout. Now remember, turn the power off before you replace any electrical components. Once you've turned the disconnect off, click OK in the procedure guide, and we can then click on the high pressure cutout and click replace on the menu. And this solves our problem. Now our next step is to turn the power back on, so we reestablish power back to the unit, and verify one full cycle of operation to make sure everything else is working properly. I'd also inspect the filter and replace it if necessary. Again, this just gives a little added value to the customer. And you can also inspect the outdoor coil for cleanliness. Once we've turned the power back on and we've verified one full cycle of operation, we wanna go up to the residence and verify that cool air is being delivered to the space. And based on the graphic from this floor register, we do in fact have cool air entering the room here. So we've solved the problem. Now, any of these steps that you'd like to review, well, you can just click on this top left icon and each of the steps that we just took in this approach can be reviewed. I hope this clears up any confusion. Good luck on your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. You can try our on-demand VR enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.